The lung exam is a physician skill essential to a high-quality physician-patient encounter. Examining each patient in a stepwise manner and similarly with every encounter reduces the chance of missed important findings. With good technique and practice, the physician can quickly locate abnormal findings that guide additional testing and management. Examination of the lungs includes the following components. Preparation, inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation. After the patient's concerns have been discussed during the interview, the physician asks permission to perform an examination. If not already done, it is appropriate to depart and ask the patient to change privately into an examination gown. For the lung exam, the patient should be disrobed from the waist up. It is usually not necessary for female patients to remove their bra. So um, the information that you've provided uh, is very helpful. Um, to get some more information, I'd like to do a physical exam now. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, what I'll do is I'll step out of the room. Um, if you could remove all your clothes from the waist up, you can leave your bra on and uh, put on the gown that we have provided for you, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Great. The examination should proceed in a stepwise manner and be performed the same way for each patient. This systematic approach decreases the likelihood of missed findings. Inspection of the patient begins in the first moments of the patient encounter. The physician notices the ease with which the patient speaks, as well as the pattern and depth of breathing. During normal breathing and conversation, the neck muscles are not visibly contracting in a patient with normal respiratory effort. During the examination, a closer view of these muscles can be obtained. Here the patient is intentionally breathing heavily to show the scalene and sternocleidomastoid muscles in action. This is referred to as accessory muscle use and is an abnormal finding indicating increased respiratory effort or respiratory distress. So first I'm going to examine on your back uh, while you breathe and do a few things here. During visual inspection of a patient's breathing, it is important to assess the symmetry of the patient's chest wall movement during inspiration and exhalation. Just looking while you take a few deep breaths to make sure that both lungs inflate evenly. Can you make a few breaths? Chest expansion as the lungs volume increases during inspiration is referred to as chest excursion. In a healthy patient, chest excursion should always be symmetric in that the right and left sides of the chest wall expand equally. Asymmetric chest excursion suggests some type of lung or chest wall abnormality. Mention each new step of the exam to the patient just before its performance in terms they can easily understand, avoiding medical jargon. I'm going to place my hands on your back and ask you to breathe in a couple more times. Palpation of the patient's chest wall during deep breaths can enhance the physician's ability to detect asymmetry of chest excursion. To do this, place both of your hands on the patient's mid-back using your thumbs to gently pull the skin toward the midline to create a visible skin fold. Then instruct the patient to take a few deep breaths and note how the patient's chest expands during inspiration and exhalation. Stethoscopes are often cold to touch and can therefore be uncomfortable to patients once they are placed on the skin. To ensure your patient's comfort, before touching the patient with your stethoscope, warm the diaphragm either by applying friction with your hand or by running it under warm water for a few seconds. Now I'm going to take a listen to your breathing. So if you could, uh, breathe through your mouth in and out a few times while I listen. During auscultation, instruct the patient to take deep breaths through an open mouth. This minimizes air turbulence and sound generation from their upper airway. Auscultation of the chest is performed while firmly pressing the diaphragm of your stethoscope directly against the patient's skin, without any intervening clothing. Listen in a systematic pattern to all areas of the patient's lungs, starting from their upper chest wall and moving to the lower chest wall on the posterior, lateral, and anterior areas of their chest. When auscultating the patient's posterior chest, avoid listening over their scapulae which can be displaced laterally by asking the patient to cross their arms in front of them. Would you please cross your arms in front of you? In order to fully assess the patient's posterior lung fields, be sure to auscultate as far inferiorly as their 11th or 12th thoracic vertebra. In female patients, this is usually inferior to their bra line. Great. 
For a lateral lung auscultation, listen to at least one location on each side of the lateral chest wall. Thank you. To preserve the patient's modesty while allowing you to examine the anterior chest, instruct the patient on how to hold your gown. So now I'll examine your front. Uh, please use one hand to grab the bottom of your gown and bring it up to your collar. As you breathe and I examine, I may ask you to lift your breast with your other hand. Please make a few breaths through your mouth, in and out. Can you slide your hand a little to the right? There you go. Thank you. For anterior lung auscultation, listen to at least two locations on each side of the upper anterior chest wall and at least one location on each side of the lower anterior chest wall. And please lift your breast now. I'll listen under. Female patients can use their hand to displace the breast upward to allow the physician to examine the entire anterior lung. Thank you. Now we'll do the other side. Can you shift this hand over? Another couple deep breaths. Comparing exam findings from the left and right lungs is important diagnostically, as this helps the physician to more easily identify areas of asymmetry, which, if present, could indicate lung pathology. This can be accomplished by alternating lungs after each auscultation point, or by auscultation of one complete lobe before moving to the same lobe on the other side. Now I'm just going to tap on your back a little bit using my finger, okay? Percussion of the chest wall provides information on the density of the underlying tissue. The physician uses their third fingers to create a percussion note that is felt more than heard. Percussion is performed using the physician's two middle fingers, known as the pleximeter and the plexor. The pleximeter is pressed firmly and directly against the patient's skin. The plexor then strikes rapidly on or just distal to the DIP joint of the pleximeter. The patient is not directly struck in this maneuver. Percussion is performed in the same locations and with the same pattern as auscultation of the lungs. Compare percussion notes from right to left to look for any evidence of asymmetry. Percussion is useful to help detect the presence and extent of pleural effusions, which are fluid collections in the intrapleural space. Just as tapping on a drum feels and sounds differently from a bottle of water, percussion of the chest varies from normal to abnormal conditions. Uh, the last thing, I'm going to put my hands on your back while you talk, and I'll feel the vibrations that are made when you're speaking. Could you say blue balloon out loud? Blue balloon. Palpation of the chest wall is primarily used to assess vocal fremitus. Vocal fremitus refers to vibration in the lungs and chest wall created by speech. This provides information on the lung's ability to transmit sound. Vibrations may be increased when the alveoli are filled with fluid, such as in pneumonia. Patients are asked to speak a diphthong, or a two-vowel sound, while the physician assesses the amount of vibration using their hands. When assessing fremitus, press firmly against the skin with either the ball of your palm or with your fifth metacarpal. Blue balloon. Blue balloon? Yeah. Assessing all lobes for vocal fremitus requires fewer examination sites than auscultation or percussion.